everyone, this is Lauren from Wearing History, and I am here trying to explain to you today how to attach the inner waistband to the 1910s camisole pattern. I was doing blog tutorials and photos, and I realized this one's a little bit tricky to explain just in text and photos, so I brought out my little video camera, and I'm going to show you now how to do that. So here is from the outside so far. Now it's not finished yet. On the inside, what you're going to have is this waist stay right here. And if you flip this down, you'll see the inside here is a seam allowance from the blouse, from the peplum, which is an optional piece, and from your waist stay. I've already gathered this to the waist stay here, and uh, so I'm not going to show you that step. I'll show you how to do that in photos. But for now, I'm going to show you how we're going to make this waist stay lie flat. Now the first thing I want to show you here as well is the ends here. Let's see if I can zoom in. Okay, we're looking at the peplum right now and I want to show you this before we pin it into place because you have two options on how you're going to do it. The first one is that your underlap is going to extend out on your belt piece. And I think in the photo tutorial I had you turn this under like this, but there should be an inch if you look at the other side. There's an inch over here. So, in the way that I believe the instructions told you how to do it, you would turn this under an inch, you would fold this up here, and then you just would pin it and then hand stitch this into place later, invisibly, so you can't see it on the other side. The other option is to trim that extension down to about half an inch. Press that under, put it under your extension, and bring this back and pin that. And actually, I think that's what I'm going to do because it'll give you a much better, cleaner finish. And instead of having to worry about hand sewing, you just secure that all when you sew your little self-facing into place. All right, so there's that. You do the same on the other side. Don't cheat like me. You should you should do this properly and not like chop it later. Otherwise you're gonna get all sorts of crazy bulk and stuff and you don't want that. This is my sample, first time I've ever sewn this before, so. Learning curve, you get to learn from my mistakes. There you go. All right, pin that into place. We're looking at the side seam now, since we pinned this just a second ago. And you see I've got one inch seam allowance here on the side seam. You've got your waist stay turned under three eighths of an inch. And if you zoom in here, you'll see that originally we have this little notch here on the bottom of the waist stay. Now that little notch is meant to line up with your uh, side seam. So if you can notice, we've got a little bit of gathering here, a little bit of gathering here. And it's nice and flat right there. That was my personal choice. Uh, originally in the period, a lot of times you would put more of the gathered towards center front, back and center front. So the way that we need to do this is we need to press that up, which I've already done. You smooth this out nice and smooth here. And then we're going to pin it at the side seam. Now, this is really important that you have the tension between these two exactly the same so it lays nice and smooth. Otherwise, you might get puckering like this, puckering like this. You don't want that. You also don't want it to be a little bit to that side or to that side. You want it nice and flush right up to the side seam, and then you're going to pin that. I'm also going to put a couple pins on either side here. My pin cushion is loud. Okay, I'll do the same to the other side here. Nice and smooth. Pin that. And pin that. Alright, now you can see here we've got these extra gathers that are kind of loose. And we're going to do that in just a second. What we're going to do now is your center back. What I do when I cut is I always make a tiny little snip at center back of all of my pieces. So whether I'm putting a collar on, a peplum on, waistband on, whatever, because it gives me a good point of reference. So although this doesn't tell you to mark at center back, I always do. So this is no exception at the back. 
Of course, now I'm not going to be able to find it because I'm on video. Aha! Here's the little mark right there. You see that? There's my center back notch. So you're going to pin up, push this up. Now pay close attention to your green line up here. If you can really closely see. Can you closer? No. Make sure that the green line at center back, back is going up. If it's going to either side, your, your back gathers are going to look kind of wonky. So make sure that that's pretty parallel to the grain that's on your waistband piece, which also should be on the straighter grain. And pin that. All right, now we're looking at the outside. I said front, but I would admit it was the outside. And you can see that if I had sewn my gathers down and pinned them without looking at the front, my gathers over here would have gone kind of that way. We don't want that. We want our gathers to go up or to be a nice configuration of some other way. So what I do is I just kind of wiggle them around, wiggle these ones around. You might even put it in on the wrong side. I know you're technically not really supposed to do this, but I do it anyway. You just have to be really careful when you're sewing not to break your needle. And if you go over it, not to poke yourself in the finger, which I do quite frequently. So, panning. This one could probably see that one's drifting a little bit. Pull it over. Pin that one. You don't have to go crazy, but make sure that you have a general guideline and then you can distribute those gathers between these points as you go on the other side. Now here's the front, and you can see there I would have had a big problem too. I would have had a lot of funny gathers in one spot and not where I wanted them to be. Here's my end thread here, if you're wondering. So, let's see. Let's make this waistline straight, because if we do this, it's going to make us all off kilter. Now you're going to ease these guys to where you want them to be. Can we go closer? Yeah. Ease those guys to where you want them to be. You can see over here we're getting some weird weirdness. We don't want we don't want this weirdness. Drift those more towards the front. You can give that a little pin. Goodness, I'm realizing I should wear lotion more often. My hands look funny. Okay. Alright. You can also give this a little tug if you want to, but don't tug too tight. Technically you're supposed to do two gathering stitches, but since this one said to do one, and I'm lazy and usually only do one anyways, then uh, you've only got one there, so make sure that you don't break your stitch. And if you notice that below the waist here, you've got some gathering go on, you wanna go and press that up again, because you really want this not to extend below, because when you're sewing this, you won't be able to catch the top of your waistband. Pin, pin, pin. All right, now let's do this side. This is where if I was watching the video, I would fast forward it, but you know, you can hang out with me if you want. And you can Notice that some of my stitching down here is visible because I didn't stay exactly on green. It happens to everyone. So if you're me, you'll go back later and unpick all that stuff so it doesn't look funny. I think that's pretty darn good. Alrighty. Okay, I am sitting at my machine now. This is the first time I've ever done this, so hopefully this will work. Here is my blouse. I am doing, let's see, there it is. There's the inside. We're gonna sew this from the inside. So, let's see if I can get it. All right, there's the belt, there's the peplum, there's the top. Make the top of the blouse go, there's my, that way. So you're gonna wanna sew, I'll just see in a second. It's going to feel a little funny because usually we have the extra fabric going out that way. This time we're going to do it that way. Alright. Now you're going to finish up all these little bits at the end uh, by hand. So don't stress about that too much. You just want to make sure that this part is nice and flat. Like how we put the belt up. 
nice and flat. Okay. I'm going to grab right in there at the very edge of the fold. I'm just going to grab it a little bit of it so that it'll tack it in place because I find that's generally easier. Take out your pin, take it down. If you have a needle down function on your machine, turn that on. And if you have this 1 8 inch guide on one of your feet, um, use that. Actually, I'm a little bit off. Maybe we situate. All right, there we go. So, back stitch. Now you're going to notice that here, you can see the back of the pins. Can you see that? Well, you're going to take my word for it. The back of the pins are right there. So you're going to align this fold right here with a 1 8 inch mark on your foot. So your top stitching will be 1 8 inch from the edge of your folded under waist stay. I think that sounds right. All right. So yeah, go. Now you're going to want to smooth your gathers up to make sure that they're not going like that or like that, like we mentioned before. Make sure they're flat. All right, there we go. Technically, you're supposed to take your pins out as you sew. Um, I admit that I rarely do. I've only ever hit them a couple times. But I also wear glasses, and glasses are helpful for uh, keeping things from hitting your eyeball. So, if you're fussy, reach underneath and pull your pins out. Make sure that you get the head and not the sharp part. Now I took a pin out because I said I don't. See the way that happens. Oh, I didn't put the needle down back on. There we go. Now as I'm going, I'm making sure that I'm smoothing the belt up. If you've noticed that you've gotten to where your belt has a bunch of wrinkles on the inside, you can stop your stitching, pull it out, re-smooth it out, and then start again. Make sure you back stitch where you left off so it doesn't unravel. Still making sure that everything's nice and smooth. Now, you'll see that these tucks are going towards that way. You just kind of want to make sure that they're evenly spaced as you go. And you know, this isn't foolproof. Sometimes you'll flip things to the right side and you'll notice that you caught things funny or whatever. Well, just pick it out and do it again. It happens to everybody. Unless you're like superhuman. And if that's you, good for you. I'm not. <laughs> Here's my other side seam, almost done. Didn't like that pin. All right. And here we are at the front. Oh, I've got a lot of little threads. If you don't have these, these are like one of the best tools in the world. Just don't get your fingers. All right. Make sure that that is nice and smooth again so that it's not wrinkled on either side. Go just inside of the lip of the fold and you're done. So let me clip this and then we'll turn this off and show you how it looks done. Hopefully it looks good. All right, we're back with the front. So we just did the inside belt. See that it's cut right there. All right. Here it is from the outside, the peplum. This is where you just gathered. This is the top. Now you're going to take all of your little pins out. If you didn't already. Now you might notice that some of my stitching isn't exactly where the gathers are. It doesn't honestly bother me. Um, if you're really fussy, it might bother you. 
But as long as things look remotely symmetrical, I'm uh, usually pretty happy with my sewing. So, all the pins out. Make sure if there's any left on the inside, you get those guys out. And then you're going to want to give it a final press. Um, you may not want to press where the actual gathers are because some people don't like it when the gathers are flattened. Um, so you're just going to want to press like this part. Because like no one needs that extra little bit of poofy right there on their waistline. It doesn't really help anybody. So there you go. Um, hopefully this will help you to understand how to attach the waistband. Let me see if I can zoom in here and so you can get a better view. There we go. Yep. Good enough. So here it is. Peplum. This is where we did our gathers. This is where we did our stay stitch. Now you can see here that there's a little long gathering stitch. You're just going to go back and pull that out. No big deal. Just don't take out your correct row of stitching. So that's it. I hope this has really helped you to visualize how this goes together. And I hope you really enjoy sewing your little camisole. Alright, thanks for watching. Bye.